Good to see you and the sunshine today, amen? And uh, we thank God for the rain. We'll wish we could have saved it up for another day, I'm sure. But we're thankful for what we have and what God has sent us and the life He's given us. Um, or I hope you are. And uh, today I'm going to share some things with you that I didn't think might happen one of these days but I can see a little bit clearly now that they might. And I'll start, let's start over in the book of Revelation chapter 13, and I'll begin talking about the beast. You know, we, we use the term the beast on a lot of things. He's the beast, or it's the beast kind of vehicle, or it's a beast kind of ship, or it's a beast, meaning beast being powerful. Uh, beast being as a time to come and the book of revelations gives you a lot of different type descriptions that are kind of beyond our imagination and then maybe within our imagination but i'll begin talking about this and, and 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 to go to a totally different place with you but to show you some changes that i see coming about it says and i stood upon the sand of the sea and saw a beast rise up out of the sea, having seven heads and ten horns, and upon his horns ten crowns, and upon his head the name of blaspheme. And the beast which I saw was like unto a leopard, and his feet were as his feet were as the feet of a bear, and his mouth as the mouth of a lion, and the dragon gave him his power and his seat and great authority. Let's go to the Lord in a word of prayer. Our Heavenly Father, as we come before you today, we thank you for Jesus. We thank you for your infinite knowledge. We thank you for your wisdom. But most of all, we thank you for your compassion and mercy. Lord, we just ask you to be with me as your messenger today. Your word as it goes out. That those that are unconcerned and those that are unaware become aware. That you touch their hearts and turn them to you. Just forgive us of our sins. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. It talks about this beast that's going to come. And it's going to rise up. And, and it begins with the return of Christ. But as this happens, it's going to set up rule on earth. And, and this beast that it talks about here, it talks about it having ten horns and upon his horns ten crowns. That's ten countries rising up once this beast appears. Those ten crowns represent their authority or kingship or rulership over in the area in the world at this time. And upon his name, upon his head, the name blaspheme. He's going to blaspheme God. And that seems like totally outrageous, right? But folks, we're coming into a day when that's commonplace. They take the word of God. It says, thou shalt not kill. No, it's okay to kill as long as it's so, so and so. Don't blaspheme God. Oh, they do it all the time. They tell God, hey, you don't know what you're talking about. I do what I want and don't tell me it's wrong because it's okay. And our laws are quickly changing. We want to, uh, and I wouldn't thought it possible, but I think about people today and, and it's all about me. And it, it's nothing about what I have to offer and what I can do and God through me, but what are you going to do for me? And that's changing uh, to that mentality. We have sections of the country that believe totally opposite to what we do. They think what we do is crazy, and I, I know according to God's word what they do is crazy, and it's against the word of God. And it, I wouldn't have fathomed it, that when I was a kid growing up because I knew not to kill, I knew not to steal, I knew not to blaspheme, not to talk back to my parents, and I believed in America, and I still do. But we would stand and we would pledge allegiance to the flag every day in class, every day. But now what that flag begins to mean is quite different than what it was when I was a kid. 
our political views are different, our world views are different. We used to care about individuals and morals. Now we search for dollars, the profit, and what's in it for us and how we can gain from it. The Bible describes a time like this coming, and it talks about the great Babylon and apostasy coming about. How the great whore Babylon, because you took of her money, her silk, her gold, her scarlet, and you were just as guilty as she was. Why I've said that is, out of those ten horns that rise one of these days, there's going to be three that are more powerful. And that's talked about in Daniel 7, verse 7. Had ten horns, and there will be ten rulers. And, and you can look at that. The beast is different from those ten horns and those ten rulers. And in my mind, I see us passively dealing in a world affairs. We, we're there, but we're not there. We're not what we used to be. And what that tells me is, in that time, it says that out of these ten horns, these ten nations that rise with rulers, there'll be three that are powerful. And it says they're going to passively just hand it to the Antichrist. And I thought, how could that be? America is passive in many of its stands. I can see three countries... Today, right now, I can see three. Russia, China, and United States. This beast rises up and they just hand him everything. Why am I telling you that? Because I see as a time coming as Christians, you're going to be able to, you're going to have to make a choice. It'll be like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. When they were forced by the rule of the king and by deception that was put, the king made a rule and it convicted Daniel for worshiping his God. You say, I don't understand how that's going to happen in America. Watch how it's passively changing. Yeah. It's passively changing. There's people arrested for crimes that are really not crimes. We call wrong right, and when we stand up against the wrong, we're condemned for standing on God's moral values. What I'm saying to you is times are changing, and it's progressing to the coming of Christ more and more every day, which it has been for 2,000 years. But I can actually see how that might happen now because of the passiveness and the greed to get money and whatever they can do to make themselves better. Example, North Korea, Taiwan, and those situations. But North Korea, he wants to be powerful. China wants to be powerful. I listen to our United States. We want to be powerful and influential, but yet we're weak and frail and very passive. Everybody wants this power, but they're not going to know how, but they'll sell out. For a dollar coming this day. It's told in Revelations. Uh, let's go to Revelations chapter 18 now. I think, I think I'm right there. Let's look at verse 13. And the cinnamon and odors and ointments and frankincense and wine and oil and fine flour and wheat and, and beast and sheep and horses and chariots and slaves and souls of men and the fruits that the soul lusted after are departed from thee and all things which were dainty and godly are departed. He's talking about ending the Babylonian Empire. These things were happening. It's going to be destroyed. And all those things, and if you'll read the, the chapter before and in there, you'll talk about the end of Christendom, end of Christianity's ending. Another voice from heaven, and, and what happens is all these world powers and all this money 
God's going to destroy it all. He's going to wipe it out. And they'll never be no more. And as he wipes it out, it was because they pursued money, cinnamon, as they referred to in the scriptures in those days, as God told them, frankincense, myrrh, all the oil. Of course, we can see oil. That's a big deal now, isn't it? And, and, and they sold out all four merchandise. They were not sold out for Christ. You see, we can have the opinion that it's good or bad or whatever you want, but I'm telling you, we're going to get a choice to stand for God and what's right. As they chose to have money, wealth, oil, frankincense, all the things and lust of this life, rather than God, and, they, and God will destroy what he called Babylon, the old Roman Empire. And it will be destroyed, and all that's with it. In Revelation chapter 12, uh, verse 9, he talks about what he's going to do with this leader that comes, and what all that are with him. He said, And the great dragon was cast out, cast out that old serpent called the devil, and Satan, which deceived the whole world, he was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. And in verse 10, and I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now has come salvation and strength. God's going to cast him out. But folks, before that comes, you're going to get to make a choice. He said, oh, I won't be here. I won't have to worry. No, you don't have to worry. It's going to come to pass, and God's going to see that it does. What my, what my thinking is, and as this happens, the Antichrist is going to rise, and he's going to come to power, and hopefully the church has gone and raptured out, and it's no longer here, and then it's going to reign, he'll reign for 42 months or three and a half years. But what gets me is people are so easily duped. And I wouldn't say that, but I feel like we as Americans have been duped, shorted, not standing on God's moral values and issues, but going by what tickles our ears and makes us feel good. I don't like you. I don't like what I hear. I don't like because you do this or you do that. or I don't like it. So I'm going to do this, and it's wrong. We studied in Sunday school about Jacob and Esau. They didn't like what they saw, and so they wanted it to have it their way. One per And Jacob, as, as an individual, as you and I would count him and Esau, as Randy said in Sunday school, we would count Esau an honorable man, and Jacob... A deceitful, corrupt man. But folks, what God sees is your heart and your actions. God will always keep his promise. We do not always keep our promises to God. As the United States of America, we have made a pledge, one nation under God, America doesn't seem to be keeping that promise. And God gave us a blessing. God will keep his promise, but we are failing short on our end of the deal. And then the timing of this and when it comes, when this ruler comes over and he takes over, it's just handed to him. And I couldn't see that. I can see that as plain as the nose on my face now. And even America... Our president, our politics, our politicians just hand it away. We give away and have no regard for us as individuals and what we want, even though it is for the people, by the people, of the people. No, it's not anymore. It's by what somebody else says. It's by what they want. It's by what they dictate. And as I see all the scenarios, and there's much more, and I haven't went into detail here, but what I want you to get in your mind is we are very close to
to Christ's coming. We are very close to what's described in the scriptures. I knew somewhat as a kid we were getting close, and we get closer every day, I understand. But I see on a world level and, and politics compared to religion, religion shoved aside, or Jesus Christ has shoved aside his word and his commandments for material merchandise gain and profit, millionaires, billionaires, leaders, powers, and struggles for money and power and leadership. What does the Antichrist want? Power. What did, he, what did Satan tempt Jesus with? Cast yourself down and I'll give you all this. But that was just worldly things, folks. Jesus owns it all. And he said, how would he tempt Jesus with that? Because Jesus gives us a free will to choose. And he chose to die on the cross for you and I. And we have free will to choose him. And he will be our Lord and our King. He's Lord of Lords and King of Kings. But Satan's going to trick you into that. And then when you're there, you want to turn back. You can't. It's too late. Because the Bible describes a temptation. As, and as he goes along and everything's lovely. Oh, it looks so good. And that's what I hear people in politics promise. Oh, it sounds so good. And when it gets here, it's cost the dickens out of you. We've lost our rights. We've lost our, a lot. Satan wants you to believe the same thing. And he's going to convince all the world that he's got the answers. And he's, they're going to hand him power willingly. And he's going to take that power and then what he's going to do as he's in Jerusalem, he's at the temple and he's, he's ruining, ruling and reigning and oh, it's all lovely. All of a sudden, he commits an abomination. He goes to the temple and he makes sacrifice with a pig or something unclean. And then they'll say, oh my gosh, I've messed up. He's not who he said. He didn't do what he promised. Do I hear, amen, that I hear that every day on TV? He's not who he said and he didn't do what he promised. It's easy to see how it's coming to pass. Zechariah chapter 14, go there just a minute. I'll give you a little more insight. Zechariah chapter 14, verse 1 through 9. He says, Behold, the day of the Lord cometh, and thy spoil shall be divided in the midst of thee. For I will gather all nations against Jerusalem to battle, and the city shall be taken, and the houses rifled, and the women ravished, and half of the city shall go forth into captivity. And the residue of the people shall, be, shall not be cut off from the city. Then shall the Lord go forth and fight against those nations as when he fought in the day of battle. And his feet shall stand in that day upon the Mount of Olives, which is before Jerusalem on the east. And the Mount of Olives shall cleave in the midst thereof toward the east, toward the west. And there shall be a very great valley. And half of the mountain shall remove toward the north, and half of it toward the south. And you shall flee to the valley of the mountains, for the valley of the mountains shall reach unto Azal. Yea, you shall flee like as you fled from before the earthquake in the days of Uzziah the king of Judah. And the Lord my God shall come, and all saints with him. See, there's a day coming, and they're going to ravish the women. They're going to take all the spoils, even in Jerusalem. And it will appear the beast has won. It will appear God is not listening. But then God, with a mighty hand, will step down on the Mount of Olives. The valley will widen. God will set up his dominion and his kingdom. He'll cast out the Antichrist. 
Folks, that's the way I've studied and learned. And I said, we had this discussion in Sunday school. We always try to help God. God doesn't need your help. He needs your heart. And he needs you to listen to him. And it's going to come down to a day, and I, I, I pray that no one I know is here. But if you are, know that God's got it worked out. You're not going to figure it out, and you're not going to outsmart him. See, even, even part of Jerusalem in this time is taken over. It looks like no hope and no way. And God shows up, and he gets the victory. When Israel was in, when, when the Israelites were in Egypt, and they were slaved. They looked like there was no hope and no way. And God made a way when there was no way. Even though they were in the wilderness and there was no food, no water, God made a way. And as we approach near ending times, and you can watch, and I, I, I watch some just to be aware, and there's no way the United States is going to make it if it continues down the road it's on. But God has a way when we turn our hearts to him. He said, if you humble yourselves and seek God's face, he'll heal your land. God, like I said, always sticks to his promises. We fail to keep our promises to God. Pray for revival. Pray that God leads you. Because we always want to help God. And yet, even as we want to help God, Satan thought he had won the victory when Jesus, man, he got the crowd to convict him. He got the crowd to put him on the cross. He got the king to let it happen. He got Judas to betray him. Man, I have got this beat. And Jesus arose from the grave with a victory. Folks, Jesus is the victor here. You can be the victor too with Christ Jesus. Otherwise, you'll be a victim of judgment and condemnation and suffering. As it told about the city of Babylon, you took of her wine, you took of her he described it as the whore Babylon. You've enjoyed the lust thereof now because you chose that rather than God. You'll face God's judgment and condemnation. You'll face punishment. You'll face the lake of fire and brimstone. You'll be led off to eternal punishment. And as we go and we live our lives and things begin complicated and Folks, I can't figure out totally this afternoon. But I know totally God has it in control. And I know he's the victor. And I know he's my Lord. And when we let God take control, it happens as God says. You don't even have to let him take control, but you won't be a part of it. You want to be a part of the victory? You want to be a part of God's plan? Get out of the way and let God lead you. Get out of the way and let God be the victor. Because you can't win the victory even though you think you can. That's what I get amazed about people. Regardless of the punishment of the crime, they think they can get away with it even though they may die. They get caught. 99% of the time. <coughs> what does that tell me about lost sinners? You think you're okay until you get caught. And you're caught without a Savior. And that's a sad place to be because it's eternity that you're playing with. So as we look in those ten horns and those ten nations that are coming, 
and the three rulers, and I don't know that that's going to be those three countries. I just use those as an example, United States, Russia, and China. But I do know it's coming. Go with me in Revelation chapter 17, and I'll close there with this. Revelation 17, chapter, chapter 17, verses 12 and 13. And the ten horns which thou sawest are ten kings which have received no kingdom as yet, but received power as kings one hour with the beast. This is where I get this from. These have one mind and shall give their power and strength unto the beast. And these shall make war with the lamb of the la of the lamb make war with the lamb, and the lamb shall overcome them, for he is Lord of Lords and King of Kings. And they that are with him are called the chosen and faithful. Are you one of the chosen and faithful? You'll be with the Lord of Lords and King of Kings. This is where he states that he's going to give power and strength unto the beast. They're just going to hand it to him. Where are you in that relationship to God? Are you just handing it over to Satan? and not surrender to Christ, where do you surrender your ability and your trust? I can't control what other countries do. I can't control what you do. I can't control the choices I make. And I choose Jesus. How about you? I choose Jesus. How about you? Let us stand and we'll have a song of invitation. <laughs> Chapter 7, verse 24 is where it will tell you there were three kings out of those ten. I didn't share that with you, and that's where I get the three kings out of the ten. But I didn't share that, but I want to before we close. It's in Daniel chapter 7, verse 24. Um, Randy, would you dismiss this in the word of prayer, please? Dear Lord, we thank you for this message. We thank you for the blessings you've given us. We ask that you lift up those on our prayer list that couldn't be here, those that are suffering and fighting different sicknesses, we ask that you go with us this week. In Jesus' holy name, amen. Amen. amen.